G'day members. For those who don't know me, my name is Matt Poltney, Golf Course Superintendent. Uh, we just thought we'd do some videos around the course over the next couple of days, just to let you know a bit about what we've been doing through the lockdown period, um, and also a bit about our course operations and what we maintain around the course. So, to begin with, uh, we'll talk about, we've got about 1.6 hectares of greens and collars that we maintain. Um, cooch surfaces that we maintain are the green surrounds, fairways, primary roughs and tees, and that equals to about 24 hectares. And then we've got the rough, which is uh, another 13 hectares on top of that. So 36, 37 hectares all up of cut turf. Obviously only 24 of that is maintained with fertilizers and so forth, which we'll go into more depth at a later period. So currently here at Green Acres we have a staff of nine. That includes a mechanic, four qualified turf managers and four apprentice turf managers. Unfortunately we lost Graham Irwin, our horticulturalist, who fortunately for him retired to the good life down on the Mornington Peninsula. So we do have a spot available in the foreseeable future to fill that. During the lockdown period, the second lockdown period, we've been, first of all, we started really going after the greens and producing a surface there so they're really ready for when we get back. So we've done some birdie draining, some dusting. You would have seen posts on social media about some processes we've been going through. Um, Staff-wise through that period, we've had staff on annual leave or school, trade school. So any one day we could have staff numbers of three here on site to five and now we're sort of back up to full numbers for four days a week and we're still producing some annual leave to take that liability away from the club. The staff's very thankful that the club has supported them all the way through this period. I think it's been a great initiative by the club to really support their staff and, and keep the place going. Other duties we've been doing throughout the lockdown, we've been uh, turfing and plugging the interface where the bent meets the cooch, just to neaten that up. Uh, we've done some bunker refurbishment on the second green side, right hand side, with some new sand and lifting some edges. We produced some new sand into the sixth green bunker and we renewed the, danger, the drainage and some sand on the sixth fairway bunker. We've done quite a bit of tree pruning with branches in the understory um, and our usual programs on the greens, fertilisers, fungicides, growth regulation, just to keep on top of that. We've done a lot of spot spraying on the cooch surfaces for Poarania and we've sprayed out a lot of the, rough, the cool season grasses and weeds in the roughs over that period of time. The last two weeks of August we sort of got um, waylaid a little bit. First of all we had a, a ra another rain event similar to the one in April um, where we had some, a lot of water on course, too wet to really get a lot of vehicles out there so we had to change a lot of operations there. And then the following week the storm hit us pretty hard so we had a lot of timber down on course, trees, branches and that took a total of 270 man hours to uh, clean up and we've still got a couple little areas to clean up deep inside the rough. So we'll talk about rainfall this year as well. From January through to May we had a total of 505 millimetres of rainfall onto the course. Um, during my time here since 2007 we haven't had that much to date for the year. We're up to 675 mil at this stage so the Melbourne average is 645 mil for a 12 month period. So you We've seen a lot of rainfall across the course, um, wetted up a lot of areas that we hadn't seen wet for a number of years, but we've pulled out of this winter period really well. We've still got some um, uh, crusty little areas from when there was a lot of worm castings, so we just started cutting these um, cooch areas now and that'll cater for that in the near future. So we're going to talk a little bit about fairway maintenance. We've got a total of 18 hectares of fairways and primary rough that we maintain. Um, we are legend cooch, but there's different types of legend that's been proven over the years. There's the finer type legend, which seems to be the superior grass. That's the, the natural broadleaf type legend, which is what it was marketed and sent out first to be. And then we've still got some pockets of common cooch and a few pockets of South African cooch. Um, we really want to try and push the finer leaf type cooch into areas. Um, down here at the third, that's probably got some of the biggest area of finer type leaf cooch which always goes well during the growing season and as you can see it's bounced back pretty well from those um, from the water that was deposited on, on along the course through the uh, river that's getting in behind the floodgate wall somehow through an underground stream so when the silt deposits the nutrients in it does make the cooch grow a lot quicker especially in the growing season but then that does put a seal over the top, so it impacts your drainage through the winter. Um, this whole left-hand side of the, of the fairway 
stays in shade mostly for probably mid-April to just about now it's starting to come out. So we do struggle on that side of the fairway sometimes. So shade does have a big impact around this place, especially at times where there's low light. Um, we can discuss that further, but obviously everyone knows what shade does to grass. So with the fairways, we try and maintain through the growing season at a 12 millimetre height. Um, we do use growth regulation products on it, which promotes lateral growth instead of vertical growth, which makes a denser and finer leaf plant. We have two mowers. It takes approximately five to six hours, depending on play, to cut all the fairways. Um, we leave the primary rough cut to be in conjunction with the green surrounds and tea surrounds, as they're all at the same height of 25 millimetres. We do lift heights as we get later in the season through autumn to give a bit more protection for the winter period. And then we usually stop cutting in the first couple of weeks of April and just let it go to give as much protection for that winter period as possible. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing the last few weeks. We've started cutting fairways and all the cooch down like we normally do and shave it down. We've managed over the years to produce some good cooch into the rough. So what we've done, every fairway has been brought out to the old primary rough cut, but then we've extended some other areas even further out to here and then the new primary rough cut will be out there. So the biggest extensions would be some areas on two, six, uh, another uh, few areas on five. So you might see as a visual we look a bit wider into areas. Of course we'll just have to watch where it's heavily treed on how it goes at the shorter height with the competition for nutrients and moisture from the trees. So we'll talk a little bit about our um, product placement with what we do with spraying. So we, to the, all the cooch surfaces we apply fertilisers, fungicides and herbicides and insecticides. So that goes onto the primary rough fairways, green surrounds, teas and tea surrounds. The only thing we spray to the tree line to tree line would be growth regulation products and pre-emergent herbicides. So that can total up to 33, 34 hectares. Our tank, if you can see it in the background, we can fit three hectares per tank, or if we're going at a lighter rate with fertilizers, we can do four hectares per tank. So you understand the enormity of the size of area that we need to spray and keep up to date with all our pesticide program, fertilizer program. So it can take, when we're doing tree line to tree line, obviously it's about two to two and a half hours per tank. That includes fill up and back out again. So obviously about 20, 25 hours total to get over the whole course. We'll talk a little bit about Pararania around the course. I know some people really like to know a bit of information about this plant. A bit of background on Pararania, it's a very adaptable plant. There's um, annual types, um, perennial types, and quite a few biotypes in amongst those types. So traditionally, we spray pre-emergence at certain times of the year, and we spray post-emergence at certain times of the year. The plant seems to be quicker than the chemistry these days. There's a lot of resistance worldwide to the triazines, the sulfon, ureas, and even the propizomites. Um, we've had some plants tested that are resistant to those products. Um, BGCSA, which is the Victorian Golf Course Superintendents Association, has been doing a lot of research over the last couple of years with the use of glyphosate, which is commonly called Roundup, and they're doing certain types of rates where it doesn't hurt the cooch as much. So you can see the enormity of the task we have. Um, the products we boom spray haven't been working as well, so we do a lot of spot spraying on the fairways, primary roughs, green surrounds and tees, just so it doesn't impact the cooch as much. Um, those rates, is a different mix of four products into that backpack rate, just so we can get a good kill on that power. If the pre-emergence aren't in the system, any seeds, and these plants can seed up to 200,000 seeds per square metre, uh, so those plants, once you kill one plant, if there's no pre-emergent in the system, those seeds will just germinate enough underneath to produce more plants. So the germination of Pararenia is you know, commonly between 10 degrees and 21 degrees Celsius soil temperature, not air temperature. So we try and work around our programs to base it around that. We've had a few problems over the years because we haven't been putting pre-emergent herbicides in the spring period. And that's due because we saw a lot of impact on the cooch with these pre-emergent herbicides and areas were taking a lot longer to come back. So even though we were gaining ground in the quality of the cooch, we lost a bit of ground, especially in this season of high rainfall where we had a lot of germination. Going back to a spring application of pre-emergent that went out last week, 
Um, it was delayed due to the storm and the, the course being wet for the previous couple of weeks before that. So once that's applied, it takes 21 days to really activate. So we're still seeing a little bit of germination around the place and we'll just continue spot spraying through the growing season to get right on top of it. We sprayed out some roughs this time with glyphosate Roundup and we were using 500 mils per hectare. The theory with spraying it during the winter period, the cooch is, whilst we say dormant in Australia, it doesn't really go dormant compared to the states but it's not sucking in any, storing any carbohydrates or anything like that. So you're able to spray that product on the cooch where it will brown off the areas, but they're starting to come back and green up now and we haven't seen any power coming back up through the areas. So we'll talk about the interface. What I mean by the interface is where the cool season grass, which is predominantly bent, meets the warm season car grass, which is cooch. Legend Cooch or these days we put Sanarana in when we ever have to turf something. So the products that we use for pyroannua suppression on the warm season grass cannot be put onto the cool season grass because it'll kill it and vice versa. The products we use on the cool season grass can't be put on the warm season grass because it stunts its growth, really impacts. So this is where it gets tricky, that interface. So we put some pre-emergent around for the first time in a couple of years around the, around the interfaces and you can see the difference. The weaker cooches don't handle the pre-emergent as well as the stronger cooches. So some areas we will have to sod out, other areas we'll just uh, renovate, put a bit, bit of top dressing and produce some growth. These products, especially the sulfon urea herbicides when we spray next to the, the greens and collars, they can reactivate for up to 48 hours with dew. So the next morning after application, if people are walking on that area, then walking on to the uh, green and collar surface, they will track that chemical onto there and produce footprints, lines, if they're taking their trolley across the green and so forth. That's the most difficult area to get right with the spraying of Pararania. So we also sprayed glyphosate on some surrounds that were notorious for power annual control. They included 1, 2, 7, 8, 9 and 15. So you can see the impact it has, it browns it off. Um, we're seeing some green up now. Obviously with the soil temperatures not up to scratch yet, whilst the cooch has woken up, it is not growing vigorously. This is also one of our high traffic areas. So whilst we replace turf, we're putting in the Santa Ana. But even though we're replacing turf, we'll still have to renovate these areas to relieve compaction, infiltrate with the fertilisers, um, try and combat the trees and trees. Even though you want to replace turf, you still have to work on that soil structure and add sand to that process. So we do a lot of verti drain in these areas, top up with sand um, and replace where needed. So you can see this area's had the two applications like the rough. Due to the fact that the rough doesn't get any fertiliser or wetting agents or any love really, whereas areas like green surrounds get fertiliser, all the products that we put on fairways and so forth. So you can see the regeneration from seed bank underneath these bigger plants. So that's where the timing of the pre-emergence needs to be before these pop back up. The process of the, of the uh, pre-emergence is it um, kills the plant off as the seed emerges. Um, Pre-emergence of root pruners, it shows up more on the cool season grasses. Still does root prune the warm season grasses a bit, but because of their stoloniferous nature, they grow and can handle that product a lot better. So moving forward over the next few weeks, we really want to push the couch surfaces along. Hopefully we get a, some nice weather that we've been having to really raise the soil temps. So the teas, they've had one cut already at 12 mil. We plan to core them before we, um, over the next week, depending on rainfall. The fairways have had three cuts at 12 mil, a good blow off. So we'll keep that height for a while and we'll start looking at our growth regulation products pretty soon. And the T surrounds and green surrounds have had one cut at 25 mil. So obviously we'll cut them again and we'll try and renovate some areas where we're looking a bit thin. So it's all about trying to promote this growth now. With the greens, the Air 2G2 machine's back in next week. So we'll pump some air into them. We'll probably give them another verti drain and we may look at a little light verti cut and we'll keep our dusting program and try and really firm them up so they're nice and firm for play when we get back. 
So thanks for your time members, I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight to what we do. I could talk for hours and hours about turf and turf management and soil science, it's one of my passions, but I wouldn't like to bore you with that. Um, so hopefully we can produce a course quick enough to, for you to enjoy straight back into play and then go on and improve year after year as we've, we've been doing.